what we've been doing here in the last couple of weeks and what we'll do next week is featuring some of our favorite guests. And we have the m, &M boys back, Mark Ballou and Mark Whitlock of CEC. Mark Ballou, the principal out here, and Mark Whitlock, CEO. We always enjoy hearing what's going on. So many positive things going on at Central Education Center. We'll talk about the increase in the dual enrollment. It's up almost 50%. We'll talk about the, the great uh, increases in apprenticeships and internships and the wonderful relationships they have with the public schools here in North Gate. I know when you think about m, m you might think about Montana and Marino, and you may think about Man on the Still using the phone company? Why? When you can switch and save with New Link. Make the easy switch to reliable New Link home phone and lock in a guaranteed low price of $19.99 a month for a full year. Just $19.99 a month gets you unlimited local and U.S. long distance and saves you over $300 a year. There's no contract required, so there's nothing to lose. Switch to New Link and save today. Call now, 770-683-6988. Welcome back to Talking with Tony. As I mentioned in the opening, today we're back here with the Brain Trust here at the, the CEC. I call you guys the M&M &M boys. Uh, Mantle and Maris people know about. <laughs> Super Bowl time. Super Bowl time, though, I think back to Montana versus mm -hmm. Marino around 1984 or so when Montana and the 49ers beat the Dolphins 38-16. But I've got Mark Whitlock and Mark Ballou coming off the Super Bowl. Before we get into this, this is usually a sports show. When I have you guys on there, uh, you know, the academia gets elevated here. I'm the third most intelligent person on the camera, for sure. <laughs> but I want to get your thoughts on the Super Bowl, for sure, Mark. What would you believe? What'd you think? Well, great game. 49ers are maybe the team of the future. Um, what a comeback. Mm -hmm. And uh, that seems to be par for what they've done. Um, the, the ability to adjust. Mm -hmm. deep into the game and to come back quickly. Uh, Colin Kaepernick is amazing. Oh, wow. Amazing. You imagine playing nine games really? and coming through like that under that pressure, overcoming the early interception. To Mark Blue's credit, he liked the Baltimore Ravens and he was correct. I did. I, like, I, I do not like them, but I... In the game. I, in the game. I liked them in the game. Uh, but, I, you know, I was just thinking I was wanting the Falcons to beat the 49ers, so maybe if the power would have went out in Atlanta for a while, <laughs> maybe, maybe the Falcons would have had a chance. But, uh, you know, that game turned when the power went out mm. toward the 49ers, so maybe I'd like to see we should have had an outage in, in Atlanta, see how it went. You know, the interesting thing about the Super Bowl is it is really a national holiday because even if you're not a football fan, maybe you're a fan of the halftime entertainment. That wasn't me this year with Beyonce. I'm not the biggest Beyonce fan. Or maybe you're just someone who enjoys watching the commercials or something. There's something for, for everybody there on Super Bowl Sunday. There's some great Sunday. commercials. Which yeah, one was your favorite? I, I like the Taco Bell with the with the old folks sneaking out of the retirement home. And, and I like the... Uh, and the the Ram the Ram Dodge Ram oh, thing on the wow. farmers yeah. that was that, that was, was good right no, but, uh, I spoke. hear people want to do the Super Bowl on Saturday so they can recover on Sunday <laughs> and not go to work but I don't think that'll ever happen but uh, but there's a push to do it on Saturday do you like it at the current uh, time slot about 6:30 Eastern time or do you wish it was played a little bit earlier wish, in the day wish it was a little earlier but you understand uh, that they want to get that Pacific Coast mm -hmm. audience and. And that's important. It is a national game. So you, you understand that. And you know what? Good for New Orleans. I mean, oh. New Orleans is making a comeback from right. Katrina and to get that tourism back and to be back in the Super Bowl business like they used to be. Mm. Good for New Orleans. And the last call, I heard about the 49ers were cheated on the last call. If, mm. If I'm the official, I think I throw the flag and I call holding and I call pass interference offense and give them another play. Because I think you could have called right. either way, but the 49er fans this morning on the radio were, we got we got cheated. Yeah. So, uh, But he pushed off, he held, so I think that would have been, now they're talking about how they didn't get a chance. But if you'd done both calls, which had been a weird call, they'd had one more play at the end. You know, I've been doing this show for a long time. It's my 99th episode, and I'm glad you guys are here. But I had a show on New Link before talking with Tony, and one of my guests was a young lady named Brenna Donatel. At the time, she was a uh, senior at Auburn University. Her father's Ed Donatel. He's the 49ers defensive back coach now. And later, after she graduated from Auburn, she became my wife's uh, assistant. And, I, you know, I'm not crazy about the 49ers, 
but I was pulling for it because of her and her family, and I know her brother. Brother played football at Iowa. The youngest brother is at Wake Forest, plays a quarterback now, and uh, you know, know, know the entire family. So we were pulling for them. I was so impressed with the text message. I sent her a text message when it was 28 to 6, and I said, hang in there, keep the faith, a lot of football left to be played. She sent me a text message after the game, and she said, you know, uh, proud of the fact that they came back. Did not complain about the call, said we're proud to have made it to the Super Bowl, and I thought like, you know, if she can put it in perspective like that, somebody who's like 25 years old and, and all, then it went back, because she knew if the flag is thrown there, that's gonna give the 49ers a the game, they're gonna be first down and goal at the one with plenty of time. Probably in a regular season game, that flag is thrown. Yeah, probably, probably so. That's a great, probably you know, that, so. that's a great point. What was your favorite commercial? Uh, the, the tearjerker, the Clydesdale. I, I'm with you, Mark. Thank oh, you. Yeah. I, I, I was hoping great, it's okay to say. Is it okay for a man to say for that? Because I love the job. I'm a thoroughbred. I'm a horse yeah. person. It's not a thoroughbred. Yeah. Clydesdale's not. But it was. Wasn't it touching? That was great. And with him, I, on yours, on that Ram one, I was like, now what is this a commercial for exactly? I Didn't kept know. waiting and waiting and waiting. Right. Is, this a, is this a pickup truck commercial or is this a pro? It was, it was both. It was, it was. Right. The Great. funniest was the Taco Bell and the old folks get that made that made me laugh. The other two were like, "Oh man, that's neat." Do either one of you eat Doritos? Because Doritos has a lot more money than I thought. Every year at the Super Bowl, they are loaded <laughs> with commercials, and they were once again prominent in this one. But did, did you hear that uh, guacamole um, distributors said that uh, in about 10, 15 years, the quantity of guacamole consumed on Super Bowl Sunday has gone up by a factor of like 10 times. Wow. I mean, wow. it's amazing what these food manufacturers achieve on a day like that, what you call a national holiday, and it really is. Yeah. You have to sell a lot of bags to get 30 seconds yeah. in the Super Bowl. Yeah. Well, that, that's, you know, not to get us, you know, not to go from one thing to the other, but that, something we always mention when we have you guys, talking about increase, it's a guacamole, a dual yeah. enrollment. Dual the enrollment. He's, he's talking about things that are going well. Guacamole this subject comes great up. Segue. This subject comes up every show, yeah. and I'm glad. And Mark, we're talking <laughs> nearly 50 percent. We're, we're talking nearly 50 percent, Tony. We're talking about right now. The numbers show 44 percent, and what that means is young people who are in high school and simultaneously in college, earning something on the way to an associate degree now. A lot of that will transfer on even to universities. Um, a lot of it will be focused on a particular technical associate degree, but what, wherever it goes, it gets them much farther, much faster, and this is for parents, much cheaper, mm -hmm. much yeah. cheaper. And you can't put a dollar sign on that right now with the way the economy is. Well, we can put a dollar sign in terms of we've got, we've got young people who saved their parents ten thousand right. dollars by getting nearly a year's worth of college completed while they're in high school? That's huge. That's huge. The growth, the growth of that is huge. Four, yeah. You're talking forty-four percent in one year. Yeah, yeah, substantial. Yeah, yeah. It's um, what you know. What it says is our high schools and CEC and West Georgia Tech. They're all really collaborating together. The, you know, that machine is really beginning to turn, Tony, and that bodes well <clears throat> because we're going to have a lot more of West Georgia Tech with that new campus. Yeah. Well, hey, look, let's get to, you mentioned the, the new campus and all. Let's get an update on the new campus. How are things going? Going well. Going well. I expect a ribbon cutting. Uh, I think you'll see something in the media pretty soon, but expect.